Well, the jury out on that one, Ankit Fadia, cyber expert, now joins us from Hyderabad. Ankit, on the face of it, there appears to be a case uh, for, if not to ban Google Earth completely, at least uh, to, 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 to cover up the sensitive installations that people like the Mumbai terrorists, as being alleged here, can actually view. Uh, I, I, do you have an argument in favor of not doing so? I think uh, banning Google Earth is obviously a big uh, overreaction because number one, there is no evidence to prove that if Google Earth did not exist, the attacks would not have taken place. And secondly, I think with technology coming in, there are so many, if you, try, if you start banning Google Earth, there are so many other websites and software that you'll also need to ban. Say a Twitter or a Facebook or a MySpace, a Blackberry or even VIP communication. So that with technology, of course, it can be misused, it can be used for the positive sense as well. And I think the whole thought of even uh, banning Google Earth is kind of silly because if you ban Google Earth in India, then the terrorists who are probably outside of India when they are planning the whole attack, right. they can still access Google Earth. Uh, but, but so that's Ankit, the whole point of uh, right. banning I, I, I get Earth. That, I get that point, but Ankit, surely there is a case here for, for Google Earth possibly to work with various governments. Uh, to try and ensure that there is some security system in place where sensitive installations like nuclear reactors, uh, i.e., are not put on that map. I think Google is actually quite open to suggestions from the gov from governments, from uh, sensitive uh, uh, organizations, wherein they're happy to work with uh, respective governments in different parts of the world, and they are actually happy to blur out or reduce the resolution of the amount of information that is given out on Google Earth. They are working with different governments in different parts of the world quite openly. Right, uh, Ankit, we, we did refer to the ISRO, uh, to the project that ISRO is working on, Bhuvan here, uh, an online map system that has 10 times more, uh, more, more precise than Google Earth. But the fact remains that this will be accessible only to the government here and therefore can remain, uh, uh, in the sense, only for the eyes of the government. Is there a parallel to Google Earth uh, in the existing systems wherein one can actually, uh, uh, when I, wherein one can actually take a detailed look at, say, an installation like the nu nuclear reactors? I think uh, it's also unfair to kind of just single out Google Earth because Microsoft has something similar and there are a lot of other mapping uh, softwares and websites that can be misused by terrorists for planning on an attack and executing an attack as well. Right. And uh, even kind of banning these uh, software and only keeping it for government use is un isn't really an option because even if the Indian government were to ban access to Google Earth, I, being in the computer uh, hacking industry, can tell you as a guarantee mm -hmm. that there are so many ways to circumvent that ban and still be able to use Google Earth. Which means even if Google were to agree to the Indian government's request of possibly not putting these sensitive installations on that map, a hacker can actually go ahead and do it. No, uh, let me correct, correct that. If Google actually chooses to blur the data, then obviously there's no way to access it unless Google is still storing that data on some database server somewhere in the world. Sure. However, if the Indian government blocks access to Google Earth, like the Moroccan government has done, right. then I'm saying that there are ways for uh, terrorists to still sort of bypass the filtering mechanism of the Indian government right. and still continue to use Google Earth. Ankit Fadia, you should consider being a lawyer for Google Earth. They're well argued. Thanks so much for joining us.